Okay, so we're going to look at doing something a little bit more complicated now. We're going to maybe create up a chair. So first thing we need to think about, we're just going to do some design work, but I'm going to start off by roughly working out um, where the seat bit's going to be. So the same thing, same idea, you work out proportions. So if you think about a chair, you've got the bit you sit on, and you've got the bit that touches the floor. And roughly, that's a kind of cube shape. Now I know lots of chairs are different shapes, but ultimately you have to sit somewhere and it has to go on the floor somewhere. So that's going to be my starting point. So my seat itself, I've got to work out roughly how thick I think it's going to be. So I'm going to give it a thickness first of all. There's my thickness. So um, how, do, how do I want that to work? Well I probably want a bit of shaping on it. So I'm going to just take the corners and if I round off one corner, I have to round off all the corners, at least all the front corners. Um, I'll probably put a little bit of curve on the back ones as well, just to make it look a bit more interesting. Now I've got to consider a few other things. I've got to consider what kind of legs are going to go on it, what kind of back are going to go on it. Well, I'm going to go for a fairly simple idea for the legs in the first place. I'm going to have um, a metal tubular bar that comes down and it curves. And I'm going to get it to come back up again on the outside. So I'm going to use these guidelines all the time to try and help me with that curve shape. So work out how far back it goes. Okay, and what happens here? Well, I'm going to make an armrest for it. So I'm going to continue this curve up and I'm going to run the curve along the actual chair itself. And I'm going to bring it up. Okay, so at that point, I know that something's got to happen. If this was real, if there's nothing attached to the top, there would be a kind of circle on the tube there. However, there also needs to be the same thing on the other side. So how do I do that? Well, if I take my line across here, I know that the curve of this one's got to be the same on this side. And I know, looking at this one, if I projected the line a little bit higher and took it across, it's kind of starting from about there. So if I come down in the same way, and then I start my curve out again, parallel to this one, it's got to be the same. I take it in the same direction, and then I give it some thickness. So I start to make the shape of this leg. How's the leg going to go? Well. I'm going to actually bend it back on itself, so we're going to pretend this is one continuous piece of metal. So it's going to come back here, and it would join to this one, but you can't see it because it's underneath. Now I can see, looking at mine, that I've got that a little bit wrong, because it's not quite in line. The curve needs to be a bit further back, which probably means this one needs to come forward a little bit. So what I'm going to do is just slightly adjust mine, so it looks a little bit more as it should. Remember I'm going to ink this in afterwards so once I ink it in that will look better. I get the idea of where the curve is going to go. This line's not quite straight so I'm going to bring this one up a little bit straighter and if I've done it on one side, I'm going to do it on the other side. But first of all, I'm going to decide on an armrest. So if I've got an armrest, my armrest is going to come along here. It's basically going to have some thickness to it. So I'll stick with the idea of isometric lines, at least in the first instance. Now I'm not happy with that at all. I'm going to move that out of the way. And I'm going to come back a little bit because it's too far over. It's going to be much more like here. Which would mean the tubular bit would have come out about there if it carried on going up. But it's not carrying on going up. And I'm going to give it a bit of a round shape to make it more interesting. back of it as well. So there's my armrest. If I've got an armrest on one side, I need to have an armrest on the other side. It's going to be the same sort of size, 
So I could take my lines across, okay, and I know roughly where it's going to go because it's going to be on the same kind of height as this tube on this side would be coming up about here. Then my armrest is going to go in the same way about here. So some of this is by eye now, but I'm still keeping with the idea of it being isometric. There's the thickness to it, round it off a little bit, round it at the back a little bit, and show the tube coming down. You start to get the idea. Okay, we need to put a back on it. So, same way, I would crate up, so my back would be proportionally about this kind of size however I might decide that my back needs to be leaning on an angle slightly so all I need to do is either curve it or move the, the line out slightly so I'm going to do a bit of both I'm going to go to about this point instead and I'm going to do a slight curve with it so if I curve one I need to do the same kind of curve on the other side so let's bring the top across and I'm going to do the same thing. I know the starting point is here. The finishing point is going to be approximately the same as this one. So it's going to be about here somewhere. And I'm going to do the curve this way. So I'm just freehanding this. It's got to have some thickness to it. So we'll give it a bit of thickness. We'll worry about shaping it in a minute. If I've got the same curve at the back as I had at the front. Okay, it's obviously got to have some thickness that goes in. And we'll worry about how this actually joins there afterwards. Could be a solid piece, could be two pieces, doesn't really matter. Um, what I might like to do, I'm going to rub out a little bit of this now, is give it the impression of having a bit of a cushion on it. So if I think about what kind of shape a cushion might be, when I say cushion, I mean the kind of, you know, the bit that goes on your head and goes on your back and whatever. So whatever I do on one side, I do on the other side. So when I shade it later on, this is where some of that shading is going to come through. Put a little bit of rounded edges on here. And you get the idea, it's starting to look a little bit like a chair. So I'm going to do what I did last time. I'm going to ink in the bits that now are important to me. to erase some of the pencil lines and we'll see what it looks like without the pencil underneath. Okay so I've got my chair there. Um, what I could do now is I could um, scan this so I've got a digital version of it and then probably I would um, print it off and I would use some Copic markers to um, actually shade it in so basically next thing I would do with this is I would scan it then I would print it onto bleed proof paper then I would use Copic markers to give it the base color and then after that I'll use a purple and a white pencil And that's to put on the highlights and the lowlights. And we'll have a little look at that in a minute. You can see how that comes out.